Hi everyone, number one Marmaduke fan here, and we are looking at a Marvel import of Spider-Man the Manga by Ryoichi Ikigami. This is issue number three. I got this in a 10 comic grab bag for $1.50. This comic was at the front, and I knew I wanted to get this comic. This made the whole this made, this justified the purchase of the entire grab bag. And I got some other great comics too. Graham Crackers, they have some great deals. So uh, the thing I'm thinking about for uh, Ryoichi Ikigami's drawing style is this is a probably 70s at most, at latest, early 80s manga style. It reminds me of Speed Racer. It's got a little, uh, it's got a little less of the angularity that you see in 80s manga and uh, a little less of like the intense motion lines that characterizes uh, 80s manga. But I still like Ryoichi Ikigami's style. For me, it's a lot of fun to see development over decades from one style gradually being replaced by another. Also, Spider-Man the manga, I feel like this comic was almost written back in time with our boy Zach in mind. Uh, last year, I, including a lot of other weebs, tried to convince Zach to read My Hero Academia, and he says he's bought it, but he's still, I don't think he's gotten around to reading it, guys, or else we would have gotten uh, video reviews of it, because Zach, he likes making him some videos as often as he can. But if he if we could all convince him to read Spider-Man the manga, I, I feel like this is the Spider-Man comic he's been wanting to see out of SGW Marvel, but he hasn't seen. Ha hasn't seen. Why do I say that? Because Electro is robbing banks. Remember when supervillains used to just rob banks, guys? Yeah. And uh, by the way, this isn't Peter Parker. This is Japanese student Yu, Yu Komori, and he's made a promise to his pen pal, the lovely Rumiko Shi Shiraishi, that he will help get money for her fa her family. So what I uh, what I like about uh, Ryoichi Ikigami's style is that it reminds me a little bit of John Romita, not, not John Romita Jr., John Romita Senior era Spider Man. You've been looking like the details of the costume, and there's actually, they, they really humanize Electro a lot. The original Electro, Max Dillon, was just kind of an asshole who got electro, electro powers. Uh, this guy, there's kind of an interesting twist at the end for him, and he's got like a really neat human moment. So for action, you can see things in like this, you know, like the uh, the exciting lines, people, people on fire, but it's a little bit uh, goofier and a little bit more straightforward than uh, later manga. Like, yeah, I can imagine Akira or Dragon Ball, you know, where there'd be like lots of upside down angles and uh, like every little thing would be in motion. But uh, I'm still impressed overall by the quality of the drawing style. Uh, after Spidey, Spidey barely survives a fight with Electro, there's, the, there's some neat little scenic moments, like all black page with a few panels and some silent scenes of them traveling sort of creepily, the sound effects as they crawl down into the basement and then a reveal of the evil laboratory where Electro was created. And there's like a really neat human kind of back and forth between the scientist and Electro because the scientist wanted money, but he wasn't down for killing anybody. So he's now having a guilty conscience and he offers Electro a chance to uh, lose his powers. Now, this was not conveyed well until the end, but Electro in this cannot touch anyone. When they say he's an, he has electric, he's an electric man, everything he touches is electrocuted. So, and he can't switch his power off. So he hasn't figured this out yet, but his superpower is really a curse. It's a Midas touch that would kill anything he touches. So after Electro denies his chance to be turned back to a human again, we transition to some, you know, goofy cartoony Japanese students talking about uh, the uh, the exploits of the amazing Spider-Man. And, oh boy, guys, uh, Japanese Peter Parker, he's got some pretty, pretty eyes, doesn't he? Uh, like like his English counterpart, uh, th this Spider-Man is also a little neurotic about the whether his powers are worthwhile and whether he should have these powers, are they a gift or a curse? And that kind of relates nicely to Electro's problem, whose powers are a curse, but he he isn't contemplative about that. He's completely fixated on getting Money. Here's another example of kind of interesting use of blank space to just build a little bit of a tense moment. One, two, three, and then we're back. Uh, we see we see uh, 
Japanese PD being nice to his his beautiful pen pal, and then Electro bursts in, and it's time for an action. Now, the fighting style is pretty much kind of like jumping around and shoving th- people through windows. It's not the most uh, sophisticated, you know, martial arts or strategy type type of fighting, but it feels like a fun old school Spider Man fight. And here, there's this really great moment for Electro where when the scientist dies by accident, it, it dawns on Electro that it, this means that he's cursed and he, there's no going back for him. And this is great. This is such like a inhuman, like tra- tragic moment for this villainous character. Uh, I would say just, just try to hunt this one up. If I got it in a uh, grab bag for the equivalent of 15 cents, there's probably a good chance you can find these em- imports from... 1999. So I won't spoil. I, I want to show this page though. So this is a great example of Japanese artists using line work to add dynamism to a simple idea. Now this pose is a little awkward, like his knees should be buckling there a little bit, but for one punch sending Electro flying forward, all of this shading has been done to kind of ground Spider-Man. And because all of this is pointing back to Spider-Man, it's creating the illusion of motion and making Spider-Man a center of interest. So this punch feels so great because all the extra work that's gone on around here for this two-page spread. This is a great two-page spread. One punch, I feel the weight of it. It's a great, it's a great little moment. So after the, some dramatic revelations and some uh, very, some very sad discussion over the fate of Electro. Uh, finally, a superhero, public menace, Electro defeated with one punch. Agavim Come on, Tom Brevoort. Okay, from 1999, you're so rude to the fans. I'm not going to let that one slide, Mr. Tom Brevoort. You could have written any kind of uh, ge- generic fill-in-the-blank uh, journalism prose for this, or you could have just like scribbled in whatever that was, or just leave whatever was there before, like the Japanese letters, and we'd have understood that we weren't supposed to bother reading that. Come on, Tom Brevoort. Uh, and then again, after the, the, the students discuss, uh, the, 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 newspaper, the newspaper journalists discuss the Spider-Man's exploits, ooh, and it's like a drawing either from life or of, from a photograph of a train station and a train slowly chugging forward, the, the, these, this manga artist really digs his scenic moments, building up uh, a sense of atmosphere and tension. And in this case, it's sort of the melancholy that Spider-Man killed Electro by accident when he when he punched him. Electro was probably already doomed anyway, since he couldn't stop being a like uh, a, a, an electric man who annihilated everything he touched. Uh, and then Spidey is neurotic over his powers and sort of walks away, almost evoking the famous cover of Spider-Man. Walk, Peter Parker walking away from Spider-Man. Uh, and just like a neat little scenic moment of an empty sidewalk in the newspaper. Th- this is visually communicating the character's melancholy to us. And there were absolutely no uh, tee-hee, I'm such an idiot jokes. He was just a straight down, I'm going to get into a fight and I'm going to take care of business action action dude. And he who, who's sort of plagued by whether whether he should be using his powers or not this way. Next, the lizard. I want to hunt for these. So the artist is uh, Ryoichi Ikigami. Uh, they call him internationally acclaimed. I'm sure he worked on other manga apart from this one. And uh, I, I dig it. I dig old manga styles. Uh, if you want some supervillains robbing banks and not uh, trying to be like woke uh, in philosophical counterpoints to the villain who are turning the universe upside down. A fun Spider-Man fights a guy robbing a bank, but still with some human drama to it. I love, I love this shade upon Tom Brevoort for that stupid thing. I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. Let's try to weeb Zach with this one. He doesn't want to read my hero academia. Fine, Zach. Here, here is your comic with villains robbing banks. Okay. I love you guys and I'll catch you later.